Jeremy Finger here, Riverbend Wealth Management. I'm sharing with you some insights on what you may be able to do to help reduce your taxes for 2022. Um, you, if you're over age 70 and a half and you give money to charity, it may be best to take it from your pre-tax IRA accounts using a qualified charitable distribution. And what that means is you take the money straight from your pre-tax IRA account to the qualified charity, no tax. Um, this may be more beneficial than you donating cash or low cost basis stock directly to the charity. Um, a lot of times only 15% or less of people itemize their deductions and may not get the full tax benefit of giving money to charity. Um, this way you can reduce your pre-tax IRA account, pay no taxes and the charity benefits. So obviously make sure you check with your, tax preparer or a CPA to make sure it's beneficial for you. Uh, one thing to note about the QCD is that it's limited to $100,000 per person per year. So that's all you can do there. Um, if business owners, you business owners out there that if you have a net operating loss so far this year, um, you may want to offset those losses with a Roth conversion. You can take money from your pre-tax IRA accounts, convert that over to a tax-free Roth IRA account. You'll have to pay ordinary income tax um, for doing that process, but that may offset your net operating loss in your business, okay? So that you convert a pre-tax account to a, a Roth IRA account, and that money could possibly grow tax-free and come out tax-free for your retirement. Um, and if you're doing, um, if you have a lot of money in your pre-tax IRA account, think about how you can fill up your lower tax brackets. Um, I talked to uh, a client yesterday and they were in a 12% tax bracket. Hey, how much do I need to convert this year to, to uh, fill up that 12% tax bracket before jumping up the 22% tax bracket? Now to do this, you really need to make sure that you look at all of your taxable interests throughout the year, all your capital gains throughout the year, all of your um, um, contributions to retirement accounts and things like that. You total all that up and, and you get an idea of how much more you have room you have in that tax bracket. Okay. If you got, if you need some help with that, certainly feel free to give us a call. Uh, don't wait to the last minute. Okay. You got to do some of these things before year in before 1231 for to have, make the biggest benefit for you. Uh, another cool account, if you qualify as the health savings account, um, that's triple tax beneficial. You may be able to get a tax deduction on the front end. It grows tax free, comes out tax free for any qualified medical expense, expenses. You need to have a high deductible plan, um, health care plan for that. Uh, so check with your health care provider if you do have an HSA qualified plan, if you do contribute to your health savings account. OK, um, also, if you happen to be in a low uh, income year and you have some capital unrealized capital gains, uh, you may be able to sell those sell that sell that company or sell that investment and pay zero capital gains. And, and for 2022, if you're single and under $42,000 of adjusted gross income, roughly um, under 42, you pay no capital gains or could pay no capital gains. If you're married filing jointly and under 83,000, roughly, um, you may be able to pay no capital gains. Again, you want to balance out Roth conversions or taking a capital gain or loss together to be the most tax benefit for you. All right. So um, all year end tax things you can also do, maybe not quite tax, but it's, it's smart to always check is your IRA beneficiaries. I've seen instances where um, a relative passed away and the beneficiaries aren't updated or many, many times uh, the spouses have each other as beneficiaries, but they don't have contingent beneficiaries. So like if the husband and wife both pass away um, and they have a pre-tax IRA account, 
you know, that IRA account may go to an estate, which limits the options available to the beneficiaries. So um, it's much better for the beneficiaries to receive that IRA account directly because they have a named beneficiary than going through the estate. All right. So double check your beneficiaries. That goes on IRA accounts, 401ks, retirement plans and annuities and insurance plan, insurance um, uh, products like like life insurance. <laughs> OK, um, gifting before year end uh, per person is sixteen thousand dollars before there's a gift tax. There's other things you can do um, to to if you want to give more than that. But um, so a husband and wife can give a child thirty two thousand dollars a year. Um, without any gift tax or any worries there. Uh, grandparents, if you want to give money, you can do so inside of a 529 plan. And that's generally used for educational expenses. You can do, this can even be through K through 12. So in the past, they limited that to any secondary education. Now they've opened it up to where it can be for grade school level. So K through 12, um, that's limited to $10,000. Uh, but for college expenses and things like that, it's any any college pretty much is unlimited. Uh, and with the way college costs is rising, we need a lot of money to pay for secondary education. OK, so what you can do is gift sixteen thousand dollars into a 529 plan. Your state may offer some state tax benefits for contributing to a 529 plan in the state of South Carolina. You may get a state tax deduction. Um, and, and let's just say $16,000 where, where Jeremy, I want to do a lot more than that. Well, you can, you can possibly lump in five years worth of contributions in your 520, in the 529 plan, uh, for your child or grandchild and, um, and get a possibly a, a decent amount of state tax benefit for doing so. The money grows tax-free, come out tax-free for educational expenses. Again, if they're, um, K through 12, they may be limited to $10,000 a year. And guess what? You may be able to take a certain amount of month, that money out and pay for, mind you, um, student loans. Isn't that crazy? That's nuts. Now, um, another benefit of a 529 plan, these assets do not count for that FAFSA um, um, in determining f federal financial aid. But when you take some money out on that, out of that 529 plan, it could um, affect um, their their um, qualifications for financial aid in the future. All right. So the initial thing wouldn't be an issue. If you get questions about that, certainly feel free to give us a call. Um, we're happy to walk you through the pros and cons of a 529 plan. Um, yes, they can also pay for apprenticeships, 529 plan. Um, there's a lot of trade schools out there that are very, very beneficial um, instead of going just straight to a four-year degree that, that someone can get uh, some real knowledge. I, I've seen clients who um, their grandchild go to and take um, these technical schools year and a half, two years, and make a lot of money, um, either whether that be repairing diesel engines and things like that. Um, don't discount trade schools, okay? Um, they're, we are, they're very, very needed. All right. Um, business owners, if you have a simple IRA account, all right, great. Make sure you make maximum use of that. Also consider upgrading that account. Maybe maybe a 401k might be better for you and your employees. Or if you've got a 401k, think about a cash balance plan. Um, depending on how the size of your company is and how um, old your employees are and how much income each of them make, could determine what type of retirement plan might be best for you and your employees. I have seen clients put in 50, 60, 100, 200,000 dollars in a um, in a retirement account each year. And so depending on which type of plan you have would determine on which type on which amount of money you can put inside your retirement plan. Okay? Um, one final thought as we're thinking for the end of the year who you give, how you spend your money uh, can have a big determinant on how happy you feel. All right. So we're coming up on the holidays and a lot of times people give money away. That's great. Um, studies have shown that 
if you spend money on experiences, whether that be a family trip, whether that be, um, you know, a nice dinner and things like that, where you're spending time and creating memories, you end up getting more um, happiness for your time and your money. Okay, generally, um, the lower on the scale of the happiness index is a material item. Uh, let's say you're thinking about a a game or a um, a tool or whatever the case may be. So when you spend more money on experiences, that's usually on the higher scale. When you spend money on material items, that's lower on the priority scale. And um, obviously, when you give money to a charitable organization or things like that, um, that really tends to warm the heart and have things feel a lot better. So um, if you any questions, comments, certainly feel free to give us a call here at Riverbend Wealth Management, 843-970-1049, or email us at jeremy, J-E-R-E-M-Y, at riverbend, W-M.com. And uh, have a great week and be happy. <laughs> Bye.